Stepping into ambulance here, it's going to start the short price favourite in the listed uh, Gibson Carmichael. Uh, Private San Diego number three has had a little bit of support and so too, Greg, I can report that uh, ambulance... Michael, racing now. Glock jumped OK in the middle of the line and Private Santiago bounced out quickly looking for the lead early. Saucy Tails is going forward with Tenancy and Batero's handy to them. Now Clay's encounter went back to last. Ambulance has settled fourth last but is in the main bunch. Out towards the 1,300 metres and Private Santiago the leader. It's about a length in front. Tenancy is up to second. Two lengths Batero just wanting to get the head up a little on the inside. Glock went round the outside and moved to third now. Handy saucy tails and two lengths further back Classic Keys. Ambulance on the inside rail. A little worse in midfield at this point. Spots the leader six 1,000 metres to go. Their trail further back in the field then uh, by towards the end of the field is Cork Aroli over on the outside. Our spur is with it and two lengths to Clayson counter. Private Santiago at the 800 metres leads by a neck. Tenancy is second. Two and a half to Glock third. Saucy Tails on the outside. Fourth Patero fifth the fence. One and a half further back Classic Keys and she's followed as they come to the turn by Ambulance a little awkwardly placed on the inside from Corcoroli, Auspur and Clayson Encounter. The Gibson Carmichael field is on the turn and Private Santiago travelled as well as anything behind. Tenancy's under the whip in second. Saucy Tails third on the outside of Glock and then Batero. It's under the whip, Ambulance is into the clear, spots the leader about six, Tenancy responding to the whip and move to Private San Diego who found Zippo. Down the outside, Ambulance is winding up strongly and Close Encounters coming but Ambulance race to the lead near the 150, drifting to the outside, Ambulance pulling away from them, our spur with a run on the inside then Close Encounter but Ambulance is too good, Ambulance raced away to win the Gibson Carmichael from our spur, Close Encounter third then Saucy Tails, Tenancy, Batero and they were trailed further back by Glock and uh, then Private Santiago who didn't finish off. Corcoroli was always well back and a long last in it was Classic Keys. Ambulance too good there. The short priced favourite winning in good start at the end. Still very green. Wanted to roll towards the outside fence but uh, he really has appreciated getting out to a long trip today and he's trounced them over the closing stages. Our Spurs run on well into second placing number eight and third coming from last number two close encounter four eight and two still learning still green but uh, untapped potential fourth aim saucy tails number ten and fifth in was tenancy number seven four eight two and they've run one forty point start the quaddy uh, six eleven fourteen fifteen are out craig knew it rides thirteen and the staying race at 155. Field behind El Nino hitting the line hard and down the track in the group three Victoria handicap before that. Dharma Donochi, who is the rating special, is at 870, and we've got uh, Elk Zar at $7.10. So it's an open race, seven minutes. Racing now. Elkazar down in gate two began reasonably. Little Dozer was slow. Princess has begun fast towards the inside. And uh, that's the trio going down towards the inside with Sir Chuckle drifting across to join those horses. On the grandstand side, and Dharma Donotcha had begun fast and led from Lock to Key, who strode over to second. Energy of Bounds is in behind them, followed by Blue Wiener. Arena Valadora is towards the tail at the 800 metre mark, trailed by Mervington and Karamazoo, last of the grandstand horses. On the other side, and Elkazar against the rail leader with Sir Chuckle virtually plotting a course up the middle of the track. Princessa in the pink is just inside it and a Little Dozer is behind those horses at the 450 metre mark now and it's Dama Donotcha on the outside from Lock the Key, Blue Wiener and a Sir Chuckle coming up the middle of the track followed by Princessa Alcazar on the far side, Karamazoo's weaving into the clear too at the 250 metre mark now. Dama Donotcha's gone, Lock the Key the leader from Sir Chuckle, Karamazoo and Alcazar at the clock tower arena Valadora's bursting through. Arena Valadora hit the front now from Lock the Key, Sir Chuckle, and Arena Valadora strode away and won it purposefully. Arena Valadora beat Sir Chuckle second. Photo third, Lock the Key or Karamazoo. Next in, Little Dozer, followed by Energy Abounds. Alcazar came up the inside, never really got into it, followed by Mervington, David Anotcha, and then Blue Wiener, and Prince Ezra dropped right out of it and ran last of all. Arena Valadora. Sprinting very well, first up from a spill. 12.90 and 3.20 getting home in the straight six. 
and a pickup ride for Greg Charles, Vincent Hall not riding here today. Arena Valadora now boasts a, uh, an unbeaten Flemington record. The two victories coming at 1,700 and 2,000 metres and now a winning performance up the straight and a very fine first up record too. Three starts, two wins and a third. The most recent first up victory coming in a class two at Geelong. So uh, he's been able to do it in stronger company as well. Could be set for a good, a good uh, preparation here. Five, Arena Valadura first. Second goes to number four, Sir Chuckle. Written by Michelle Payne. And third, number 12, Lock the Key. Written by Andrew Bloomfield. 5 4 12. Karamazoo ran fourth, coming from last on the uh, outside. And fifth in was Little Dozer. They've run 1 9.4. Run. That's good form, Pat. Yeah, run. yeah. And, and his run in the derby was a good run. The, the track was very tricky that day, and he sort of was floundering a bit, and then he got his footing and sort of passed half a dozen down the straight run six so I was happy with him. You got a chance didn't to beat the favourite have you? I think he's got a real chance yeah. Okay mm. good on you Kim. Thank you. Okay yes she was always uh, up here for our carnivals Kim and by gee she goes home with a bit of our cash too that horse looked particularly well in the enclosure that um... we'll be heading trackside soon straight after this Eagle Farm event to Casterton. Staff party in the betting at 470 and Jewel of Kingston for Claire Lindop in single figures, with 17 Alpine Lass on the third page of scratching. There's the favourite Sunday Joy about to be loaded at Eagle Farm, race five. They're all ready to go. Martoum has been very heavily backed here on track, <clears throat> trained by Kim Moore, Corey Brown in the saddle. Sunday Joy stands well with Fountain Abbey. There's one on the move. It's General Minolta. A starting signal not quite given. Oh, geez, going off General Minolta. Now they're right. Once he comes down, if they can get him down, he's down now, General Minolta. Bill Shuck has the button. They're ready. And they're racing now. Fountain Abbey off the inside left quickly. Said he began well. Martoom's going through and Fuji Bell and Sunday Joy's going a little bit deep to the turn out of the straight, but they're going pretty hard early. About three lengths away then came Half Hennessy, followed by General Minolta, then came McCann and Jimmy Walasco as last of all. Out to the 1800 metres mark. And Seti is the leader. Sunday Joy's a length away on the outside. Fountain Abbey travels third. Martoum is fourth, he's one out, two lengths away, then came Fuji Bell. A length away to half Hennessy, one to General Minolta, followed by McCann and two and a half to Jimmy Walasco. Heading down the back, 1,500 metres left to go, and Seti on the inside, the leader, and the speed steadies. Leads by a half, Sunday Joy is second. Racing third on the inside is Fountain Abbey, and Martoum travels fourth. Now Fuji Bell is pulling very hard, they're walking now. Half Hennessy's next on the rails. Now here's a move, General Minolta about to take off and go three deep and put a, put a bit of pace into the race. McCann's back the next to last and last of all was Jimmy Walasco. They head up to the top corner, <coughs> 1,000 metres left to go. And General Minolta went clear the field. Led by two lengths, Seti's in second spot. Fountain Abbey travels third the inside. Sunday Joy fourth the outer. One and a half to Martoum on the back of Sunday Joy. Half Hennessy travels next on the rails. One to Fuji Bell followed by McCann. And two last was Jimmy Walasco. Gerald Minolta's got a good break, 700 metres to go. Led by four to Seti, two Sunday Joy moves closer. One Fountain Abbey, Martoum next to the outside's been asked to go forward. Half Hennessy tracks out behind him followed by Fuji Bell, McCann and last Last of all is Jimmy Walasco. They're on the bend, 4.50 out on the Grand Prix and General Minolta's first for home, led by three lengths. Sunday Joy goes to second on the outside of Seti. Martoon's been called upon for the run and half Hennessy's coming down the outside, but General Minolta's got a good break. At the 2.50, General Minolta about three. Half Hennessy and Martoon are coming after General Minolta, who's dying, and half Hennessy's grabbed him. Half Hennessy got the General Minolta from Martoon, and half Hennessy's drawing away. Half Hennessy beat General Minolta, Martoum third, six lengths away, Fuji, Bell, McCann, Sunday Joy didn't go home in the straight, a big gap in the field, Jimmy Walasco, and then came Massetti, who's pulled up at the tail of the field, bar one tail right off was Fountain Abbey. Well, he's had a bit of luck for the first time in 100 years, half Hennessy, and he showed what he could do. Number one, half Hennessy is the winner, ridden by Scott Seymour, to pay 4.51.50, Three second, General Minolta's paid 310. 
and for Martoum has paid $1.50 and the favourite Sunday Joy was beaten with 300 metres to go and she's been beaten a long way and I'd say Gay Waterhouse will have to have a close look to see whether she continues this Phillies campaign. But he's been an unlucky horse for a long time, Half Hennessy. And uh, he's won easily at the finish, and he sprinted very, very quickly. He and Mark Martoum was in front of him uh, when they made their runs for home. But Half Hennessy sprinted too quickly for Martoum. And General Minolta, which established that big break, was hanging on tenaciously. But Half Hennessy's been able to go home over the top of him to win. One Half Hennessy to pay 4 50 Three General Minolta, 3 10 Four Martoum's paid 1 50 and nine was for Bede Murray after his horse half Hennessy. He's finally cracked it for a big one. Right, Al. Bede Murray does look uh, happy, and uh, it's not before time, mate. No, it's not before time. Uh, the boys that uh, said he wanted the ground have been right. Yeah. Certainly won well, didn't he? Well, yeah, he did. Certainly he's done it right at the right end. Bede, um, was there sort of circumstances behind his Sydney runs why he didn't uh, perform properly to your expectations? Well, he had that bad setback in his first run back this autumn when he ran the nails in his foot in that first run, and he was a month off getting him over that, and I always planned his. Uh, preparation for Brisbane after that and, um, this and the derby we weren't too sure just what way to go until last weekend I had him in the uh, in the Stradbroke whether he was going to stay or go back to that and uh, after last weekend we decided to go this way well good luck in the derby then. thank you very much thank you mate Speed Murray with half Hennessy. Well done, Larry. Half Hennessy coming back to scale in Brisbane after the Grand Prix. Just about set for the Casterton Cup. Your caller is Ron Paps. Sponsored by Gorman's Real Estate. No claiming race. The light continues to flash. They're away. The grey, rusty, dusty grey came out a little awkwardly and uh, so too did flash of light away fast near the inside was Classic Patches and also Charm Scene Land who heads it from Outstrike Breaker. On the outside, watch the fuss. Rusty Dusty Grey recovers quickly and charges towards the lead now. He wants it at all cost. But it's Charm Scene Land at the post with a circuit to go and Rusty Dusty Grey cutting. They're out about four lengths in advance then of Watch the Fuss. On the inside, our Strike Breaker with his big weight of 59 getting a nice run early. So that'll help his cause. Further back behind those then came Jewel of Kingston on the outside of Classic Patches. Another two Two lengths further back behind them in the all-white scenic glow on the outside of Staff Putty. Two lengths further back to Flying Voodoo, who's down on the inside of on the outside all the action. Two and a half further back, flash of light. Two and a half further back again. Now two lengths as it closes a bit of ground. Glass Park miss. And still further back to Armanau Ray and Showgazer last of all. The battle for the lead is over now because winning that battle with the grey yielding to second placing is Charm Scene Land. Charm Scene Land shows the way three quarters now to Rusty Dusty Grey. They've br given a breather. A length away behind those. Watch the fuss might serve it up to them. It does now. It takes them on again. So here's another battle for the lead. Our stake breaker, Jewel of Kingston and Classic Patches are joining in and Staff Party's got a beautiful run up on the inside. Over on the outside in the all-white scenic glow, all the action comes around it and they're bunching right up now. It's really on an earnest as they move on to the side now. And further back behind those flying voodoo, Showgazer's trying to get into the clear, but as they come to the turn now, Classic Patches broke away from the ruck. It got clear. It dashed away three or four lengths in front around the home turn. It might have pinched this. Classic Patches five or six in front now. Trying hard behind those then along the inside staff party but it's all scenic glow going to third and second now but classic patches is going to stroll home classic patches is going to win by panels from scenic glow then staff party but classic patches ease down no doubt about it getting the journey won by about seven lengths to scenic glow about four away staff party all the action a glass park miss showgazer made some ground further back jewel of kingston they were followed well back then at intervals on the inside running flying voodoo our strike breaker didn't get into it he knocked up the big wake told they were followed by the stragglers including Amanau A further back behind those then on the inside was uh, let's see we've got flash of light pulling up quickly there with what's the fast charm scene land was one of the last with dust rusty dusty grey together 
So Wayne Hawkeye on fire, four classic patches, 330, 160, eight seed low, $3, 10 staff party, 250 in the Casterton Cup for 2003. We're getting closer to 1290, 320, Sir Chuckle, 340, Lock the Key, 440, Quinella, 5620, Trifecta, 2000, Scott Seymour, Bede Murray, take the Grand Prix, 450, 150, General Minolta, 310 and Martum at 150, the trifecta 169.60. And the Casterton Cup, 4, 8 and 10, classic patches, 330.160, scenic low, $3, staff party, 250, trifecta, 170. Manor Hill at $2.30. Beaten six lengths in the Randvet Stakes last time. That's Group 1 Company. Was just beaten in the Group 3 Canterbury Cup before that over the 1,900 metres. Len Beasley to take the set. It's had the 40 starts for six wins and 10 minor placings. Manor Hill, the favourite for the upcoming Metro. Sacra Claus, double H way odds, 8.30. Kiwi Warrior, $10. And looking over the page, we can see... The remainder, Strange Conflict, 9.50. Scott Seymour took out the previous, the Grand Prix, and Magritt at 10. And they're all set to go. They stand well in their racing, and gee, Manor Hill began like a half-mile sprinter. Midnight Warrior began quickly. Cull starts going for speed. An awesome weather, and Kiwi Warrior just behind them. Sacra Claus getting back on the inside, followed by Magic Tumbler. Strange Conflict a little bit deep, going to the turn out of the straight, followed by Hurry Hurry, and Margrit is last of all. Out they go to the 1,800 metres mark, and Cull starts got the mouth open. He wants to go a bit quicker. He's two in front of Kiwi Warrior, uh, well, Midnight Warrior. Kiwi Warrior's third on the inside and Manor Hill's outside it fourth. Two lengths away then Awesome Weather followed by Sacra Claus on the inside of Magic Tumbler. A length and a half to Strange Conflict on the outside of Hurry Hurry and two and a half to Margaret. Down the back in the Metropolitan 1500 to go. Cole Start is the leader. They're going along in a fairly even clip now. Three parts to Midnight Warrior. A length and a half to Kiwi Warrior. One to the favourite Manor Hill in fourth position. Two lengths away Awesome Weather. Half the Magic Tumbler. Another length Sacra Claus on the rails followed by strange conflict hurry hurry and three last of all is margaret They've completed half the trip. 1,100 metres left to go. Cull start on the inside. Three parts to Midnight Warrior. Two lengths away. Kiwi Warrior. One and three quarters to Manor Hill. Awesome Weathers tracking up next on the inside. Two Magic Tumbler. One and a bit to Sacra Claus. Followed by Strange Conflict. Hurry, hurry. And Margaret is last of all. Down to the 700 metres mark. And Cull start giving them plenty to catch. Midnight Warrior's off the bit second. Kiwi Warrior third. Manor Hill is fourth on the outside as they come over the crossing. B just starting to edge that horse along. Awesome Weathers next on the inside with Sacra Claus, Magic Tumbler, Strange Conflict, Hurry Hurry, and Margaret is last of all around the corner. And Midnight Warrior went up on the outside to join Cull, start in the lead. Kiwi Warrior came at them. Manor Hill's having a struggle to get there. Sacra Claus has gone past Manor Hill. It's gone, the favourite. Then then came Magic Tumbler and Awesome Weather. Midnight Warrior, the leader from Kiwi Warrior, and Sacra Claus on the outside. Awesome Weather got up on the fence. Awesome Weather in front of Midnight Warrior, Sacra Claus, Strange Conflict is jumping up out of the ground, it'll grab them, Strange Conflict has got up the beat, Awesome Weather and Sacra Claus, and then came Midnight Warrior, followed then by Magic Tumbler, Margaret, the next time Hurry Hurry, followed by Kiwi Warrior, Cull, start and you can't believe it, the favourite, Manor Hills run Stone Lust. Stone Lust. Well... I can't make any excuse for it. We'll have to wait and see. Strange Conflict's the winner. Number nine has come from a mile back, Scott Seymour. Well, what a day he's had. He's won the Grand Prix on half Hennessy, and now he's won the Metropolitan here on Strange Conflict. Number nine, Strange Conflict is the winner. Second goes to four, Awesome Weather, Aaron Kennedy. Six third, Sacra Claus, Justin Stanley. And eight was fourth, Midnight Warrior, Kenji Yoshida. The numbers are nine, four... Six and eight. The dividends on the race: nine strange conflict, nine dollars and two twenty. Four awesome weather, two eighty, and six sacra claws has paid two dollars ten. A favourite Manor Hill hasn't beaten one to the line, so Gay and Lenny have had a big day. Sunday Joy finished a long way back in the Grand Prix, and Manor Hill hasn't beaten one to the post. So maybe the uh, the Sydney Carnival might have taken its uh, a campaign on some of these horses by the look of it. And uh, they just can't, I guess they're not machines and they just can't keep going. And I'd say you can have your last on Manor Hill going to the paddock with Sunday Joy. Quinella, 
$40.10. The trifecta, $473.10. For number nine, Strange Conflict by Bite the Bullet out of Kentucky Rose, trained by Eric Ropier and ridden by Scott Seymour. This horse has had an absolutely checkered career. He started off, he looked like being anything. He, he went to a number of different trainers. He's had a couple of different trainers. And he wasn't going. I think he did a tendon at one stage. Eric Ropier has, uh, ended up with him and has absolutely got him firing. He won at Eagle Farm two runs back. And here he is back here today winning the QTC listed Metropolitan Handicap. So nice horse, isn't he, by Bite the Bullet. And he's been promising to deliver in a big race ever since he was two. And he's race seven, Eagle Farm, big field here, Larry, but a good race. Yes, it is, Matt, and of course I've got Brian Guy here with me. Uh, Brian, you've got two runners in the race. I've got you running second and third. Have I got it right? No, you've got it wrong, Larry. should be first and second. OK, well, OK. Let's talk about Bal Yabba. We'll talk about King Lotto. Oh, sorry, not Bal. It's King Lotto first. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, he, he's an honest old fella. You know what he's like. He put... Here we go. Dr John Power. Set. They steady down, and they're racing. And King Lotto from barrier number two is the first to come out of the gates, and Clay Shaker began in a big hurry, and they're the first two going up to the first corner with Clay Shaker going to the lead. Callaway Gal zoomed up the second on the outside of King Lotto. Orphas fourth, fourth, and then came Shockeroo, followed by Academe. Then Knickerbocker Kid on the inside. Keffel's midfield, Pembledon's wide, followed by Pitt and Slipstream Foxmore. Eminent Chevelle gets back, and so too does Ken Concani, followed by by Jar Jar Binks and last is Caribou. Down to the 600 metres markets, Clay Shaker, Callaway Gal together. Umfana close third, King Lotto fourth from Shockeroo, Academe. Knickerbocker Kids on the inside, then Foxmore, Pitton, Slipstream, Pembledon and further back Ken Kankani in the straight. Umf went through to go to the lead and Nick the Callaway Gal, Clay Shaker on the fence. Foxmore and Knickerbocker Kid trying to get through. Here's Shockeroo and Academe and Keffel and Slipstream. At the 200 metres mark, Clay Shaker and Umph together Shockeroo, Akadim and Keffel is joining in with a big run. Oomph and the Knickerbocker kid. Keffel's on the outside. The Knickerbocker kid got to the lead and Knickerbocker kid has won from Keffel. Not sure about third. Ken Kankani, Foxmore and Oomph together. The next time in the race then we've got Caribou, then Clay Shaker, Slipstream, Eminent Chevelle and then King Lotto followed by Akadim, Jar Jar Binks. Pittens, Shockeroo, a long way back is Callaway Gallon. Last time in the race is Pemmelton. Knickerbocker Kid, Jason Taylor, thank you, at $73.20. And $16.20 wins the money. Knickerbocker Kid, 69 in New South Wales and 84, is it, on, uh, on um, Victoria? Dear oh me. Number 20, Knickerbocker Kid, Jason Taylor first. Four second, Keffel Jim Byrne. Now, what's run third? 17's run third, Foxmore. And fourth went to number six, Ken Kankani. So I'll give you these numbers. They were 20 as first, four, 17, and six. Keffel pays 2.20. Foxmore pays 11.70, and the fourth horse Ken Kankani, he was showing anything. He was a $26 job as well. If you've got the first four, um, type out your resignation notice and give it to the boss first thing in the morning. You won't have to work again. Knickerbocker Kid started from Barrier One. Jason Taylor by Opera Prince out of Manaquin. Trained by Gary Portelli at Warwick Farm and Jason Taylor, the winning rider. Now, the winner scored by a length and a quarter, a head between second and third, short half head to the fourth. The time's 19.2, that's three tenths outside the race record, standing to the credit of Rancho's Ku and Fuadi. OK, Al, thank you. 24 and 17, the numbers. Look at the trifectas. They're mammoth. 32,000 Uni Tab, 65,000 New South Wales. I'll chase up the first four dividends for you. In the meantime, back to Larry Olsen. He has Gary Portelli.
Thanks, Matt. Uh, you, you got a smile on your face. When I went through the form, the only thing in this bloke's favour was that he had barrier one. Yeah, well, that's always been a problem before. He hates racing inside horses, but um, we thought he could win at Wagga the other day, and they went slow, and he just worked home late, and uh, it was disappointing. And I've come up here thinking, well, we'll just give it a go, you know. And um, He wasn't bought here as a stable mate for one of your better ones, was he? <laughs> he's here to pay the way. Um, you know, he um, he's just a marvellous old horse, you know. He's, he's, he's always there about. He finished two and three lengths behind us like Shogun Lodge and in big races before. And I said to Jason today, I said, if you can just stand over him a bit, he's getting a bit older now and he's not, I think he's really, I think he's getting away with murder with these jockeys. Just stand over him and get him on the bridle and get him travelling. And come to the turn, he was running fifth. I said, he's never been fifth on the turn in his life, you know. And um, just an amazing effort and great riding. You can put down to it apart from the weather. Might be the trip up here, I'd say. Great weather up here. And uh, he's getting old now and this might be just a change he needed too. Good luck, Gary. Thanks very much. Okay, well there we are. Uh, I think if you've got the first four, you've uh, you can just about, as I heard Alan say, retire, Matt. Yeah, exactly right. Well, I can tell you, uh, Larry, it's just come through. It is a jackpot, which is no real surprise. 24, 17 and 6, the jackpot to amount $29,000. But uh, a jackpot, the uh, first four. But uh, we're trying to search uh, the uh, New South Wales uh, dividend. Uh, we'll find that in a moment as Gary Portelli and uh, Jason Taylor celebrate after winning the John Power Handicap. Now Armadale, race number seven is next up. Real sight.